Okay, let's do uh, parallel axis theorem. So how do we get, how do we get these uh, uh, relationships? We know that the rotational inertia, some people call it moment of inertia, I, it's the sum of each little mass. It's mass times R squared, right, for each one, right, sum of all of them. So if we're dealing with point masses, we just add them up, right, figure out what I is for each point mass, add them up, and that's what we use. If you're dealing with a solid object, let's call, let's say, a rod, and it's rotating about some point, maybe its end point there, <clears throat> then we have to break, each, break the rod up into little tiny chunks, right? And we add up the, the contribution to each chunk. What is that? That's an integral, right? You have to integrate over this object. So we don't do that in this class, so we rely on the textbook. And it gives us the rotational inertia for various objects. Now you might expect it depends on the axis of rotation. It's not just the object, right? So let's take a rod, for example. If our rod is rotating about its center point, versus rotating about the end point, which one is going to have the greater rotational inertia? Which one's going to be harder to get rotating? Which one's going to be harder to stop rotating? Maybe you've done this yourself. You had a, uh, <clears throat> a meter stick. I'll use a ruler. <laughs> Won't be as dramatic, but you had a meter stick or a long broomstick, right? Something long. Hold it in the middle. Try to wiggle it around. How does that feel? Then hold it at the very end. Wiggle it around. See how that feels, right? Have you done that before? Which one is harder to get it rotating? This one, right? Which when you feel it, it's harder to stop it once it is rotating, right? You really feel that. <clears throat> this one much easier, okay? So the rotational inertia in this case, uh, we'll call this uh, A and this B. The rotational inertia for A is going to be less than the rotational inertia for B, even though it's the exact same rod. Same length, same mass, same rod. You pick a different axis of rotation, it has a different rotational inertia. So in your book here, they list both of them. This one is 1 12th the mass of the rod times the length squared, and this one is uh, one-third the mass of the rod times the square of the length. Okay, so they're both listed in the book. But those are the only two that are listed in the book. What would happen if it was spinning about a point here? What if that was the axis of rotation? Because you don't integrate, <laughs> you can't figure that out. If you could integrate, you could do that fairly simply, right? But we don't do that in this class, so there's, maybe there's another way we can figure this out. The book doesn't, uh, doesn't give us this one. But we can use what we call the parallel axis theorem to do this. Or what if this is the case? What if the rod is rotating about a point over here? In other words, it's doing this. Here's our axis of rotation, and the rod is rotating around like this, right? Forming kind of a washer, 
or a donut, right? Leaving a hole in the middle as it rotates around. Okay, that could be also. So how would we do those? Well, we can't do it with this. So we use the parallel axis theorem. The parallel axis theorem tells us that the rotational inertia about some axis that's parallel to the axis that goes through the center of mass, that's our parallel one, is equal to I for the center of mass plus the mass of this thing times D squared, where D is the distance between the two axes. Okay, so let's look at the first case. Let's do uh, uh, C and D, we'll call them, okay? Let's do C. <clears throat> so let's make this L over 4. So we know the center of mass is, is here, right? Center of mass is there. Our axis of rotation is the black dot. <clears throat> so we'll, if we had the axis of rotation going through the center of mass perpendicular to the board like this, like the stick here, okay, <clears throat> we, we can find, we know what that is, right? That's in the book. It's, uh, what is it, 112? ML squared, right? We know what I is when this thing is rotating about an axis that goes right through the center of mass. We want to know what it is about an axis that's parallel to this one and located over here, right? So the distance between the two axes of rotation is, I'll use uh, blue here, is this distance. That's capital D the distance between the two axes, they have to be parallel, these two axes, right? So what is IC? That's our parallel one. It's the I center of mass, which is 1 12th. <sighs> 1 12th ML squared plus M d squared, and d is, what is d? L over 4. You see that? The distance between the two axes is, is a quarter of the length of the rod, right? <clears throat> so we just put that in there. The center of mass, axis of uh, I, we look up in the book, 1 12th ml squared. Now we just have to add these together. It's 1 12th plus 1 16th ml squared, whatever that is, 48ths, what, what do we get? 7 48ths, is that it? I think that's right. Check my math later. Okay.